So we're just a couple days out from the Canadian federal election, and I just wanted to give my final prediction, which is my previous prediction, and all my previous predictions going back to the start of this race. And basically what I've said from when this whole thing began was that it's a nothing burger. I mean, this is Canada, so it's not a nothing burger. It's a nothing poutine. You just got the fries, but there's no cheese curds and there's no gravy on it. So it's a nothing poutine. It's a massive waste of everyone's time and money. Nothing's going to change. The simple fact is, unless Quebec does another big swing, it's going to be very difficult for any party to get a majority. Uh, because two elections back, they voted the NDP. And then this election, they voted, or I guess maybe it's, yeah, it's two elections prior to this one, they voted NDP. And then last election, they switched back to the BQ. And it looks like they're going to vote for the BQ again. And without Quebec decisively supporting a ma one of the major parties, and Ontario and BC being so split, it's very difficult for anyone to form a majority government at this point in time. There's also the claim that the People's Party of Canada is acting as a spoiler for the Conservative Party. I'd have to press X to doubt on that. I don't know what percentage of them are people who didn't vote previously. Because that's something you always have to keep in mind when you look at these. The actual pool of voters might be getting bigger or smaller, but because this always adds up to 100%, that really isn't that obvious. Like, just picking an arbitrary number, the Conservative Party might have gotten 2 million votes uh, and 34% of those who voted, and this time they might get 2.4 million votes with 30% of the, all those who voted because more people decided to vote. So that's very possible. So I don't really know what the People's Party, if it's people who don't normally vote or people who vote for some other third party or disaffected conservatives, or where most of the base is coming from. But there's a belief that if they didn't exist, all of these people would be added on to the Conservative Party, which I just, I don't think is the case. Because uh, I know I personally was not going to vote Conservative, regardless of what happened. And I just basically voted, because I figured I might as well go out, since voting is a free action, and voting PPC. So if we look at the electoral math, like I said, it's it's a nothing poutine. The conservatives lost some support in parts of the country where they got basically all the seats anyways. So it's not really going to matter. As I've said, like, let's look here. Um, they've gone from 69% support in Alberta to 54% in Alberta and 55% in the prairies to 42% in the prairies which will be a net total of two seat change. Oh boy, that's that's really going to be decisive. The electoral math is really moving on that one. <clears throat> so we have that. Uh, we also have the Liberals are going to lose maybe a couple seats in Ontario. The issue is because it's first past the post and because of vote splitting. Um, if the NDP and the Conservatives pick up, about the same percentage of the popular vote, it's not going to really change the underlying math um, that much as... <sighs> you get what I'm saying. It's... it's Yeah. Anyways, so... The Liberals tend to do better where it actually matters, a.k.a. Quebec and Ontario, and they're about the same in British Columbia which is a bizarre case where there's a four-way race. Now, this time it looks like the Green Party has also imploded. But once again, who cares? The Green Party doesn't matter. The PPC doesn't matter. Like, none of these people really matter at the end of the day. So we look at the net change, and we're having the Liberals lose percentage points in Ontario which, if we take this seriously, it seems to be going to the PPC. Uh, the Conservatives are exactly the same this time as they were in the previous election. And since the PPC won't win any seats, it doesn't really matter. The NDP picked up an irrelevant percentage of the vote, basically across the board. So it's, it's like I said, it's completely irrelevant. Now let's go and look at the seat totals for Canada. Let's see how much of like a nothing poutine this is. 
oh boy, the Conservatives are going to pick up a couple of seats in Atlantic Canada and Ontario and lose basically the same amount in Western Canada. Whoopie doo, that's that's a massive accomplishment on their point, their part. Uh, the Liberals are going to lose a couple, but pick up a couple elsewhere. Who really cares? The Green Party is might lose all the remaining seats, fingers crossed. And that's it. It's going to go from Liberals holding 157 seats and having a minority government to holding 144 seats and having a minority government. The NDP might pick up a couple, though I'm going to press a massive X to doubt on that one. BQ will remain exactly the same. It's just a nothing Poutine election. Like I said, it's a waste of everybody's time. The question is, will Trudeau step down? Probably not. We'll probably have to deal with this again in another two years, and we'll have another nothing Poutine election where absolutely nothing interesting will happen. And we'll just have another series of like, I gotta say though, this is like the biggest freak show I think among the leadership I've ever seen. You have Justin Trudeau, who's just Justin Trudeau. You have uh, Mr. Bland, aka Aaron O'Toole, who's trying to out left wing Justin Trudeau. You have Jagmeet Singh, like the the Sikh who wears the pink turban and just spouts like uh, Reddit talking points. You have the discount Jills Decep, who actually is probably the person I like the most. And you have the black Jewish woman. So that is the collection that we have. That is the rogues gallery um, of this election. And it's just, I haven't really been covering it that much. We're going to have an election night special because those are always fun. But to quote the AVGN, what a shitload of fuck.